What is up guys, Evil Duos Arm here today, and today I have for you a video where I'm going to look at five things that I wish I knew before I started Blade and Soul. So these are like five tips or five tricks or five different things in the game that I wish that personally I had known about before starting uh, playing or before I got too invested in the Blade and Soul. So anyway guys, the first one is uh, clans. So clans in Blade and Soul work uh, pretty similarly to just about any game, right? You uh, join a clan, you can participate in clan events and all that great stuff. But uh, additionally, in Blade and Soul, clans have more than just a social aspect. As a clan levels up, and we're talking about competitive clans here, um, they get different benefits to the players in, in the clan. So um, the first benefits start at clan rank 6, they come in at clan rank 9, and they come in at clan rank uh, 14, I believe is the last one. But anyway, the clan benefits in Blade and Soul are reductions to your upgrade costs. Um, so initially it's like a 5%, then it jumps to 10%, and then it's actually 5% on evolution costs as well. So what does that actually mean? Well, the 5% on equipment upgrade costs that uh, my clan currently has, right now anyway, is uh, when you're going to upgrade legendary accessories and you use legendary jewels. As you can see down here in the bottom of the screen, and let me move it over so it's not blocked by the webcam, um, it's actually only going to cost 95 silver. It's not because I'm a premium member like it says, it's because our clan has a 5% discount. So that doesn't seem like a lot, but you're going to be using a lot of legendary jewels. It'll probably save you 3 or 4 gold over the cost of upgrading, or over the time of upgrading an accessory. Likewise, when that jumps up to the 10% breakthrough point as the clan gets bigger and bigger, um, it's even more reduction in cost and it's going to save you a ton of gold. Now the big one comes at uh, level 14 of a clan, so if you join into a big clan or get into a big clan that's highly ranked, um, actually when you go to full on upgrade your weapons, and I can't show you this one because obviously I don't have it, um, but you get a reduction of 5% on breakthrough costs. So breakthrough costs are looking at like 50 gold a pop, 5% on that is 2.5 gold off. Um, so to save 2.5 gold on every stage that you're upgrading these Raven weapons, for example, it's, it's a crazy amount of money to be saving. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it adds up over and over as you continue to progress your character. So anyway guys, getting into a big clan early and as fast as possible, or even forming your own clan and inviting random people you run into in the game, um, simply because the ability to level up that clan and lower your cost on upgrades is uh, a very very important factor of this game and something that everybody needs to know about before they get too invested in here. Like I probably would have saved probably 50, 60, 70 gold, which once again doesn't seem like a lot, but that is a lot. That's a whole bunch more items that you could purchase or maybe that five extra gold you needed to buy the item in Black Tower and you just ran out of money on the bidding phase. Um, you know, there's so much that you can gain from that. All right, so the next one that I wish I knew about was wind striding. So when you're wind striding and walking around like this, right, and you're running from point to point throughout the story or playing through the game or just generally running around uh, in Blade and Soul, you're eventually going to run out of stamina that you see right there. Um, a quick way to boost that stamina right back is to go ahead and go to the top corner of the screen up here, see the little change channels icon, and switch to a different channel that you're in. Switching channels will refresh your stamina bar, as you can see right there, and you can go ahead and start sprinting again. Um, it's a great little tip to make getting through the story faster, uh, to just generally travel around the map faster, and is one that I wish I knew about a lot sooner than like playthrough number seven of a character in this game. Let me tell you, sucker would have saved me so much time. So anyway, next thing that I want to talk about is sale registrations in the marketplace. So I cannot count the number of times when I was uh, first playing that I would start and I would just go through and I would put up like one item, like one Raven King Soul, or one of this, or one of that. I mean, obviously not a Raven King Soul early in the game. Um, and I'd list it on the marketplace as a quantity of one, you know? And uh, basically, you are limited to 10 registrations per day for your character. So if you put up a whole bunch of ones, uh, you're going to use up all of your sales registrations for the day, and basically won't be able to make as much money. So we're talking about things you were farming, like, I don't know, essences for boss wheels that you can sell on the marketplace, uh, things that you crafted, transformation stones, uh, whatever you're putting up onto the marketplace, um, you're only limited to 10 per day, so make sure you put it in bigger stacks than just one or two. Um, that being said, you also need to keep into account the uh, registration quantity limits over here in the corner. So if we go ahead and uh, look at the registration fees, if I can get this to uh, pop up here when I put in a number. Alright, so basically if you hover over this question mark that pops up over on the left hand side of the screen over here, um, it shows you your market fee. So as you can see, 1 to 5 is 2%, 6 to 10 is 3%, 11 to 55%, 51 to 108%. That's how much that the game is going to take from your sale. So always try to put it on the higher end of a breakpoint. For example, if you have like 107, I don't know, of something that you're trying to sell, um, put it in one bundle of 100, which is 8% uh, fee, and then put it in one bundle of 7, which is a 3% fee. Um, so your net average uh, total percentage charged to your account there, your total loss rather, 
is going to be less than that 10% if you were to put all 107. So you see 107 would fall between 101 and 250. You would lose 10% of whatever you sold it for versus 8% and then 3% of the other one, which probably comes out to a weighted average of like 8.1% or 8.2%. Um, it's a really, really small number compared. So make sure you're registering with that market quantity registration in mind that's over there uh, so that you don't waste money when selling stuff. So those are my market tips that I wish I knew. 10 listings per day and then make sure that your quantities are in bundles so that you don't jump to the next bracket when you do bundle stuff together. All right, the next one I want to talk about is mailing stuff between your characters. So uh, if you have multiple characters, which everybody should have at least two characters in Blade and Soul um, because that is how many it gives you. Uh, you want to be able to mail materials between your characters, and the biggest thing I can think of is upgrade materials. So even if you only play one character, you should 100% level up that other character that you have on your account to level 16. At level 16, you can use all the mail features, market features, and all that good stuff to go ahead and send uh, materials back and forth between your main. Reason for this is because uh, you can store all of the crud that you don't need until you upgrade weapons or upgrades on one character or the other. So for example, you see that I have none of, this is where I used to keep in this bottom corner over here by the vault. I used to keep my uh, soul stones and Elysians and Moonstones and uh, sacred orbs, all of those. That's what that eight spots right there are for. I actually just transferred them all over to my alt character um, that I don't play very much. And that character has uh, all of the upgrade materials. So when I want to go and upgrade my weapon, all I got to do is transfer the materials over to this character and then make the upgrade. Um, once again, the reason for this is because of how much uh, time it saves or space it saves. So now I can clear all of this inventory space out in my main character and send it over here. So basically what you want to do with this tip is have your alt character um, or whatever character you don't play be your banker and send all of the upgrade materials that are account bound. So things like Demon Spirit Stones, uh, Raven King Souls, anything that you don't really need a lot of or you don't need them or you only need it when you need to make an upgrade even forging orbs, go ahead and send those over to the alternate character so that character can hold on to them until you do need to send them over for your upgrade. Now as far as what sorts of things you should send over, really the uh, eight upgrade materials here, the soul stones, moon stones, Elysian orbs, and uh, what's the other one, sacred orbs, those ones are very easy to send back and forth between characters. The market fee I think is like a copper a piece on those things, it's super cheap. Bigger ticket items like raven feathers that are gold a piece to send, raven king souls are ten gold to send a piece, or three gold to send a piece. Um, those sorts of things you should keep on one character over the other or whichever character is going to be using it more often simply because you'll be wasting a lot of gold. But those basic eight upgrade materials, yeah, I'd say 100% send them over, save yourself some inventory space um, and make the game easier on yourself. So um, those are the four tips. The last tip that I want to bring up here is uh, soul shields. So if you go ahead and look at your soul shield set, there's actually a soul shield tab and the game really doesn't do a very good job of explaining this to you. I believe in the intro to the story bit, like right at the start, they tell you that you can press B to open up the Bopay soul shield page. And that's not even true anymore. It's like control B that you got to hit. But anyway, so there's a whole separate tab for soul shields on your inventory page. And uh, most of my videos I show you just go ahead and right click it to upgrade it over here, or click on it then click manage equipment and that's how you do the upgrades that's the easy way to do it there's this whole other tab called a soul shield bow pay tab i believe is what it's called but anyway on this tab you'll see all the different soul shields that you have in your inventory so i obviously only have eight right now um, but you also see an alternate soul shield uh, set here so you can go back and forth between different soul, two soul shields so what this is for is for people that are using like pvp sets and a pve set so you can just swap back and forth and you don't have to go ahead and reconfigure every time from soul shield pieces in your inventory so that on its own is a great save but the other thing you can do on this which is a little bit less known is you can actually uh, put two different sets of pve soul shields on or you could use it to uh, stockpile and save up inventory space again so like for example if i went to the marketplace or the mail here and i wanted to put soul shield pieces into the bank over here the banker you can see they only go in the basic tab. Uh, the soul shields can only be deposited in the basic tab. I can't put them in the secondary tab. So that wastes a lot of space in here if you're trying to hold on to an MSP set or another uh, a PVP soul shield set and you don't want to keep it on your player's inventory. So you can actually go ahead and go to this alternate uh, soul shield tab, which is control B once again, and put those pieces on the alternate soul shield set. So as you can see, I'm dropping my VT set over onto the alternate soul shield set. So in my inventory, I've freed up those three slots for my soul shield, and as you can see, they're not on my main soul shield. If I went and switched to my secondary soul shield, um, the three pieces are there along with the remaining BT pieces because it fills in whatever pieces are left, basically. Once again, if I switch back to this soul shield set, um, it looks like it's auto-defaulted it back, but you saw anyway what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, you can put three different soul shield pieces over onto that set and save the inventory space. Um, so this is good for leveling character if you're like playing through the story 
and uh, you don't want to have to uh, go to a banker or go to the merchants to sell off soul shield pieces and you know you, they give you the soul shields through the story um, you can just throw the one set onto the alternate set and then put the new set on the good set and run that good set until you get to a merchant to go ahead and sell the alternate soul shield set away basically frees up inventory space lets you have two different soul shield sets so if you do have like a specific set for pvp you can put it there um, but yeah the alternate soul shield set page is super useful for uh, new players geared players alike um, it will definitely save you a lot of time, a lot of uh, shopping, and a lot of inventory space. So anyway, guys, those are the five tips I wish I knew before I started playing Blade and Soul. They're uh, pretty pretty interesting, pretty useful tips. Um, if you have any that you think I left out or anything you want to share that's a really great tip for newer players, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found the video useful, and I will see you at the next video. Peace.